Today we are going to learn about integrating sine x and cos x. To integrate expressions involving trig functions, we use the table of standard integrals. Here we can see that sine ax will integrate to negative 1 over a cos ax plus c. And cos ax will integrate to 1 over a sine ax plus c. This table is given on the formula sheet, therefore there is no need to memorise it. Example 1a. Here we have the integral of 3 sine x. We're going to use the first rule in our table. Now we have the number 3 in front of sine x. That just gets copied down and it's the sine x that we then integrate. And sine x will integrate to negative cos x plus c. There is no a term here, so the final answer is negative 3 cos x plus c. Example 1b. Here we have the integral of 4 cos 2x dx. So therefore we're going to use the second rule in our table. <clears throat> now cos x will integrate to positive sine. So here again we copy the number 4 down. The cos 2x becomes sine 2x However, because there's a number in front of x, we need to remember to divide by that number at the front. So the expression is 4 over 2 sine 2x plus c, and 4 over 2 can be simplified to 2 sine 2x plus c. And example 1c, here we have the integral of negative 4 sine of a half x. And again, if we're going to our table of integrals, we are going to use the first rule. And sine will integrate to negative cos. Now, because we have a negative 4 at the front, this will then become a positive 4. The sine a half x becomes cos a half x. The half will divide um, at the front, so it will be 4 divided by 1 half. And we have our plus c at the end. 4 divided by 1 half can be simplified to 8 cos a half x plus c. Example 2. We have to find the integral between 0 and pi over 4 of 4 cos x plus root 2 sin x. So first of all, integrating. 4 cos x will integrate to 4 sin x. And again, we use our table of standard integrals to help us. But positive root 2 sin x will go to negative root 2 cos x when we integrate because sin integrates to negative cos. And here we have to evaluate this integral between the limits 0 and pi over 4. The next step will be to insert our limits. So we replace x with pi over 4 and 0 to get 4 sine of pi over 4 minus root 2 cos pi over 4. And we take away 4 sine of 0 minus root 2 cos of 0. To help us evaluate um, this integral, we will need to draw our exact value triangles. And specifically, our 1, 1 root 2 triangle, which has pi over 4 within it. Here we can clearly see that sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. And also cos of pi over 4 will also be 1 over root 2. So we'll insert these values in our next line of working. So it's 4 times 1 over root 2 minus root 2 multiplied by 1 over root 2 and then sine of 0 is equal to 0 therefore 4 times 0 is 0 but cos of 0 is equal to 1 therefore 1 times root 2 is going to give us root 2 so the second bracket is 0 minus root 2. If you need to draw the graphs to help you 
discover what sine of zero and cos of zero is, that can be sketched at the side of your page. Now simplifying, four times one over root two becomes four over root two, and root two times one over root two is root two over root two. We then have four over root two minus one, and the double negative there becomes a positive root two. From there, I'm going to rationalize the denominator um, of that fraction to get four root two over two, multiplying top and bottom by root two. We can then simplify that answer to two root two, take away one plus root two, and then two root two add on root two will give us three root two subtract one as our final answer. Example three, find the area enclosed by the graph y equals sine four x plus pi over six, and the x-axis in the lines x is zero and x is pi over eight. So the first thing we need to do is recognize that to find the area enclosed by a graph in the x-axis, this is an integral question. And here we've been given our limits zero and pi over eight. So we have the integral between zero and pi over eight of sine four x plus pi over six. Step one will be to integrate the function. So sine will integrate to negative cos. And as we have a number four in front of x, that will come out to the front to get negative one quarter cos of four x plus pi over six. The following step will be to insert our limits. So we're first of all going to insert pi over eight. So we have negative one quarter cos of four times pi over eight plus pi over six. And we're taking away, and if we insert the limit of zero, that will give us negative a quarter cos of four times zero plus pi over six. We simplify this a little bit before we can get the exact values of these angles. So here we can see in the next line, we have simplified four pi over eight to pi over two, but we still need to add together pi over two and pi over six. I suggest that you do your working for fractions at the side of your page. So here, if we have pi over two, plus pi over six. First of all, we need a common denominator. So if we multiply the first fraction by three, we'll get three pi over six plus pi over six, which will give us four pi over six or two pi over three. This will be inserted into the first bracket. So we have negative a quarter cos of two pi over three minus negative a quarter cos of pi over six. Now pi over six and two pi over three um, are exact, have exact values that we need to work out. So let's use the exact value triangles. So from our exact value triangles here, we can see that cos of pi over six is root three over two. However, cos of two pi over three, we need to think about where the angle two pi over three lies. Two pi over three will lie in the second quadrant. And how did we get two pi over three? Well, that has the same exact value as pi over three. However, cos will be negative in the second quadrant and cos of pi over 3 is a half. So inserting this information in the next line, we have negative a quarter times, and its cos of 2 pi over 3 has an exact value of negative a half. And we're taking away negative a quarter times cos of pi over 6, which has an exact value of root 3 over 2. Simplifying this further, we have an answer of negative a quarter times negative a half, 
will be 1 eighth. And negative 1 quarter times root 3 over 2 will be negative root 3 over 8. This can then be simplified into one fraction, which will give an answer of 1 plus root 3 all over 8 square units for the area under the graph. Now try these examples on your own. Please pause the video. And the answer to the first question is 2 over 3 sine of 3 over 2x plus pi over 5 plus c. And the second one there has a final answer of negative 0 0.55 and that's correct to two decimal places. So what have we learned today? Today we have learned how to integrate sine x and cos x. The key steps are using the table of standard integrals to help. If we have limits, they will be inserted, but if we don't have limits, we must remember our constant of integration.